All right, so now we are up to part two of the IndexedDB series using vanilla JavaScript. So we're going to be working with the raw methods, objects, interfaces that come with IndexedDB right in the browser without using any libraries. So the first part, we talked about how to create, how to version databases, how to add stores, remove stores from the databases. We created a database called WhiskeyDB, and we put a store inside of it, Whiskey Store, with the key path set to ID. Um, if you haven't watched that part, the link right above is so you can go back and watch that part before this. Now that we have it created, what we want to do is we're going to use this web form right here. We're going to have a user fill in this information, click on an add button, and then we want to take this data, put it into an object and save it right here inside of our database, inside of our store. So here is the form itself. It's called whiskey form. Uh, there's a name, a country, an age field. Uh, there's a checkbox for is owned. And then we've got the various buttons. Now, I don't have an ID field in there, but we're going to need one in our database. This ID is going to be used for our key. So we have to generate an ID somehow. So what I did was I just quickly, easily built this little function. I'm taking the current timestamp, converting it to base 36. I'm taking a random number, converting it to base 36, concatenating the two of them together with a hyphen. Um, and then this is going to be my random ID. So we're creating that. It's not guaranteed to be unique, so I wouldn't use this in a, in a production setting, but it's going to give me something that is definitely unique enough for what I'm doing here. All right, I've added the submit listener to my form. This is going to run what, at this point when I click on any of the buttons, but I'm going to use this as my submit for updating and adding. We're going to need to create an object here. So I'm going to create an object called let whiskey. That's going to be my object inside of here. There's going to be an ID property and I'm going to call that UID method that I created in the other file. So there we are like that. Now, because I've got it running in the console, I can actually see what that generates. If you want to take a look, this is what the IDs are going to look like. And every time I run the page, I'm going to get something that is different. So those are going to be the IDs that I use to add things into the database. All right, we need to get the values that are actually in the form. So those are going to be, we'll create a variable for each one. Okay, so we've got a string for name, a string for country, a number, we're doing percent for the age. Owned is going to be a Boolean. The ID is going to be that string that we're generating. So we're going to put these all together in here. So this being the ES6 syntax, we could do it like this, or we can just say ID. There's going to be a property called name with the value of the variable name. And we've got country, age, and owned. Those are going to be the values that I'm going to put in there. We can create other values and add them to the object later, like if I wanted to track uh, when something was edited, something like that. But for now, I'm just going to put in these values. All right, there's our object. We want to put this into our database. Now, with IndexedDB, everything that we do has to be wrapped inside of a transaction. So we're going to start with a transaction, and inside of that, we're going to make a request to add the data. So step one, we're going to create our transaction. Now, we're going to have to do this with every single request that we make for data. So we're going to move this out into its own function at some point, but for now, I'm just going to keep it inside of here. So DB transaction. We're going to do a database transaction and we have to say, what database are we going to put this on? Or, or rather, what collection are we going to put this on? WhiskeyDB, that's the name of our database. But inside there, WhiskeyStore, 
this is going to be where we're going to be putting the data. So which of the stores inside of here, not just the database, but specifically which store inside of the database are we going to use? The second property is this mode. Are we going to do read only or read write? So I'm doing read write because I'm actually going to be writing in there. There's no write only, but there is a read only and a read write. So we're doing read write. We're going to be adding this data that we just created right here, this whiskey object. We want to put that into the database. Once we have a transaction, now the transaction is going to have events of its own. So there's an on complete and there's going to be an on error. So this is the event that comes back when the transaction is finished. And that's going to be all of the requests that are wrapped up inside this transaction. So this variable right here that we're using, that's going to be used to create the requests. And we can have a whole bunch of requests when all of the requests that are attached to the transaction are finished. That's when this is going to fire. So let's just put a console log in there for now. And we'll do a console warn here. This is if there's an error that happens on any one of the requests that is inside the transaction, you can have an error. There will be, there will be an on error listener for each of the requests, but that will also bubble up to the transaction level. So we will get a transaction warning if any one of the requests failed. Okay, so we have that. The transaction is now ready to use. We've got that TX object. Now we have to point to the store where we're going to make the request. So we'll say object store inside the transaction. Which one inside the transaction? Well, we're going to be looking at the same one, the whiskey store. And this may seem a little bit redundant, but we're going to come back to this and a little bit later on. We're going to be able to do things like um, look at the indexes instead of the store to target things. So with the store, now we will actually create a request object. This is the request that's being sent with, hey, I want to do a delete. I want to do an add. I want to do an update. I want to read the data that's inside there. And all we have to do is pass in this object that we created. We don't have to specify a key for it because when we defined the store back up here, we defined the key path. So when we created it, we told it which of the properties inside the object was going to be the key. So that's why we do not have to specify it here. We've done that. And then just for good measure, we want to always add the listeners. So on success. And I am here using the on success property to do this, but I could do add event listener as well. That works just as well. There we go. So we can test this now. That's it. We have the transaction with its listeners. We have the object store pointed to so we can make the request and we have the listeners for when the request has completed. So let's jump over here and we can actually watch in here. We'll have to do a refresh after we insert it, but let's do this. And we'll click the add button to trigger our listener. And there we go. If I squeeze this over a little bit, we can see number zero, that's the index number. There is the key that's been pulled out of the data. And if I open this up, there we go. This was the data that we put inside there, a number, a Boolean, and a few strings. One of those being used as the ID. So we could do something else. And again, data may be stale. It knows that it's been updated. Refresh. And there we go. There's the second one. So the index numbers are incrementing. There's our keys. And if we look in the console, we can see that, yes, sure enough, successfully added an object. That was the 
listener for right here for the request success and the transaction complete was this event right here type complete so success on the request success on the transaction success on the request success on the transaction and that's it that is the basic process right here now as i was saying before we are going to have um, this code is going to happen with every single request that we make so this is something that we might want to pull out and put into its own function so we can create a function i'll call it make tx and what do we need to pass in well it's going to be these things right here we need to pass in a store name we need to pass in a mode so that we can do this and this is going to become store name and mode we're going to return that we'll put it into a variable here that we can return at the end come back up here and we're calling our function make tx and we're passing in those two values now the error handler this i'm going to take out of here i'm going to put it inside of this function so the listener for the errors is inside of this function i get to reuse that every time the complete i could put it into that other function um, the only thing about that is you often have different things that you want to do depending on what transaction it is it's going to be you're going to have different things here so my options are i could put a callback here to some other function to call when it's done or i can just write it here and then you know have a function like build list or something like that where i'm displaying the data but i'm going to do that next time um, for now that's it that is how to make transactions how to make requests how to bind them together and run them in your code so keep watching for the next episode in this series on index db if you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below i'll answer as many as i have time for and as always thanks for watching